Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Fusion 360 Tech Tuesday. Uh, today we're going to do the how would you make this. Uh, so this is actually a flag post holder and there's some kind of some cool stuff going on with this thing and so we're going to learn a couple of cool new commands that I haven't talked about yet such as the rib command, the web command, um, I'm going to show you some cool tips and tricks with with blends and fillets. And hang tight at the end, I have a pretty cool announcement that I think all of you are going to be really happy about. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, okay, this is what we're going to be making. And I actually uploaded the uh, drawing uh, into the description of this live stream. Uh, so you have access to this. Um, now this is not like a fully dimension, but it's dimension enough that hopefully you'll be able to follow along with this live stream and maybe go back and watch the video uh, and learn how to make this. So I'm gonna be toggling back and forth um, to this drawing as we're going through. Now you can see um, we're gonna learn a couple cool commands such as this variable fillet. I'm gonna show you how you can go about doing that. I'm gonna show how did I make this curved text follow um, oops, uh, this shape here. So we're gonna learn about that also. And we're gonna learn about the uh, web and rib command. So I'm gonna start a new design. And let me do this really quick. I'm making sure I'm in millimeters because the drawing is uh, in millimeters. And I'm gonna start by creating a new component. Now, I've mentioned if you're doing a single part, you don't really have to do components. You could do it as a body, but I just personally like to get used to the fact that um, I'm gonna create everything as components in case I need to use this in an assembly or if I wanna create a drawing of it or whatever. So let's just call this uh, flag pull oops, holder. Okay, so I have a new component called flag pull holder and I spelled it wrong, so let me go ahead and uh, rename that, sorry. Okay, and I'm gonna start by creating a sketch on this front view. Now, I'm gonna show some tips and tricks. There, there's many different ways we could go about making this, and I'm not saying the way that I do it is the right way or the way you have to do it. Um, in fact, I'd love to see what you all come up with. So please definitely post in the comments of this video if you attempt creating this, uh, show your results. I love getting emails from you and seeing the comments and everything. So definitely uh, if you attempt this, put it out into the comments. Um, so I'm gonna just start by creating um, a line here. I'm gonna kind of do the, the basic shape, okay? So I didn't worry about dimensions or anything. Now I can come back and say, for example, um, this I want to be uh, 60 according to the drawing. And then I want the, uh, the bottom to be 27. And again, I'm just grabbing these off of the drawing. Now, obviously you'll notice some, some weird things going on, but I want this to be equal. Now here's a cool little trick. I'm gonna just create a line and if I get near the center, you'll notice it kind of snaps to the center automatically for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click there. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here. And you'll see it sort of snap to the center right there. Okay. Then I can come in and use a horizontal vertical constraint. And when I click on this line, you'll see that it forces it to be vertical. Okay, and so that kind of makes everything equal now. Now this line, I don't want it to be an actual object line, so I'm gonna select it, and in my sketch palette, I have the option to turn it to a construction line. And I personally recommend um, turning these into construction lines. So notice what happens now. It doesn't recognize it as an object line, and so this is all one profile. If I had left this as an object line, you'll notice that it actually kind of um, splits the part in half and it thinks it's two separate profiles. So I like to change it to a construction line. Um, maybe I'm going to come in here and dimension that line, which according to the drawing is 95. 
so we can kind of see how that sort of changed the shape a little bit. And then finally, I might just throw a circle on here. So I'm going to get near this line. And I'm just going to say uh, this is 27.5. Again, grabbing this off the drawing. And I'll, I'll switch to the drawing here in just a moment to show you where I got all of this information. I know that this circle is a certain distance. So I'm using the D for dimension shortcut. So I just hit the D key on my keyboard and it allows me to place a dimension. I know this one is supposed to be uh, 45, I think, 46. I can't really see, I'll have to confirm. So let's just jump over to the drawing. I'm 48, <laughs> my eyes are bad. Okay, so here's the information that I was using. So this circle right here is the 27.5. And then I'm dimensioning the overall height of that circle being 48. So let's go ahead and fix that really quick. That should be 48. And then um, the overall shape of the triangle we can kind of see is 60 wide at the top, 27 wide at the bottom, and then 95 for the height. So that basically gives me my, my basic shape right here. Okay. Now, I'm not going to add any fillets or whatever. I like to keep my sketches fairly simple. So I'm just going to say Finish Sketch. I'm going to go ahead and select both of these profiles because I like to start with kind of the major part of the design. And this, the back is kind of the major part. So I'll come in here and say Extrude. Um, again, I, be, I love the fact that I can come in here and basically you know, select what I want. I'm pre-selecting. I just right mouse click and it shows me the commands that make sense. And I find this a huge help instead of trying to find the commands in the menu. I know that, okay, I've selected a profile. The only thing I can really do with it is extrude it or maybe edit the sketch. Okay, so I'm going to say extrude and start to drag. And I think the total thickness is 8 in this case. So I'm going to type in 8 and say OK. So we just basically created the this shape of the back of this part here. Now I want to come in and maybe add in some of this detail. And we can see um, that there's actually like a five millimeter wall. There's some three millimeter webs. Uh, there's some holes that go through here. So I'm going to go ahead and do these holes. Now here's a neat little trick that I'm going to show. You'll notice that these holes aren't dimensioned, but they have center lines. So they're actually based off the center line of this blend or fillet right here. So if I create this fillet first, it'll automatically position these holes for me. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to click on this edge to pre-select it. I'll right mouse click and again it shows me the commands that make sense. In this case, I want to do a fillet. Uh, those are supposed to be 8, so I'm going to type in 8. And I'll go ahead and select the other edge. So I picked one edge, I told it to do the fillet command, and then I, it allowed me to select this other edge. And you'll notice that it's a radius of 8. Now the edges down here are a radius of 5. But we have this cool functionality where I can come in here and just hit this add a new selection. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll select these bottom edges and notice how this says 8. My new selection says 0 but let's go ahead and change that to 5. So I think this is really cool because typically when you want to blend something you know or fill it something I, I want to do like all the edges at the same time in one command and so this allows you to do that. So instead of having a whole bunch of fillet features in your timeline, we now have one fillet feature that basically has two separate sizes to it. In fact, I can even come in here and rename my feature. So instead of calling it just fillet, I could say um, base plate blends or something like that, for example. And now when I hover over this, it says extrude. When I hover over this, it actually says base plate blends. 
So you can rename any of these features, including your sketch. I could come in here and say, this is base plate, right? And so now, you know, once I have a whole bunch of sketches, I could just hover over this and know that this has to do with the base plate sketch. Pretty cool, I think. Okay, so let's go ahead and now I want to do the holes. So I'm going to click on this face, right mouse click, and it shows me the commands that make sense. Now, I've shown the hole command before, which I could use, but in this case, I'm going to actually create a sketch. So I'm going to say sketch. We'll do the circle command, and this is what I was talking about. Notice I'm not snapping to any grid or anything like that, but when I get kind of near the center of this fillet right here, it automatically snaps to that location. I'm just going to go ahead and click right there and type in the, the hold dimension, which is 5.25. Okay, I'll do that again. I just come over here and it automatically catches to the location. I don't have to do any dimensions or anything. Now I'm just going to draw a circle. I don't care what size. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to draw a circle and I don't care what size there either. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I want all of these circles to be the same. So we'll use a constraint and there's one here called equal. What this allows me to do is I want this circle to be equal to that circle there. And same thing here. I'll just go ahead and click those and now you can see all three are the same size. So again, instead of having to type in 5.25 over and over again three times, I just did it once. And then we used the equal constraint. And what's nice about this is if we were to come in and say that's supposed to be 8, all of those would update also. I don't have to edit each individual dimension. So that equal constraint is very, very useful. Okay. Now I obviously want to um, make this more correct. Okay. Um, actually, you know what? I just realized something. <laughs> I'm going to back up because you'll notice where my origin is right here. I want to actually make this a little bit more centered. And I realized I want this to be centered. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch right now. And this happens a lot. You'll, you'll go ahead and do something. And you're like, well, how come that didn't quite work? And I'm going to come back to my sketch right here. And sure enough, we can see that I'm not lined up. So I'm going back in time to this very first sketch. And I can now say, for example, I want this point to be coincident with that zero, zero. And notice how it moved over. In fact, let me undo so you can kind of see what's going on here. Nothing is really constrained. I can tell that by my blue lines. But once I come in here and say, I want this circle, the center of the circle to be at zero, zero, it's now fully constrained, which is cool. I'm going to finish my sketch. It did my extrude. It did my fillets. I'll go ahead and edit this sketch now. And let's just move this guy over just a little bit. Okay. So now we can see how we're centered. So again, um, I accidentally made that mistake, but I'm glad I did because I wanted to show you that you can always go back in time Make that change and all your downstream processes will update. Okay, so now I'm going to dimension this guy. So I'm just going to throw a dimension from here to here. Um, that's six according to the drawing. And I want it to be lined up. So again, I'll use this horizontal vertical. I'll say that point there and that point there. And you'll notice it lined it up to be vertical with each other. And it turned from blue to black, which means that it's now a valid sketch. It's fully constrained. So I'm going to finish my sketch. And I'm about to show you another cool little trick here. Um, I want to extrude these. Now, you'll notice as I'm moving my mouse around, it kind of flashes. And it's sometimes hard to pick the profile. It's, you know, right there, OK? Sometimes you have to zoom in to grab this profile, zoom in to grab that profile, zoom out and then zoom back in again, right? Uh, we've probably all experienced that. Well, here's a neat little trick. I'm just going to come in here and say, for example, press pull. 
and I'm just going to draw a box. Now you'll notice I want to make sure I select everything, so I'm going to kind of come up a little bit higher. I'm just going to draw a selection box around these three circles. And you'll notice how it selected all three of those. So instead of having to zoom in and hope to catch my profile or whatever, I just drew a box around everything. Now I can start to drag. And again, how far do we need to go? Well, the answer is far enough, <laughs> but you have a couple options. I can actually hover over and you'll notice my cursor says snap to negative eight. So it's actually kind of like probing through and grabbing that back face and it'll actually snap to that back face. Or I could come in here and say, instead of going a distance, just go through all. And it's going to extrude all the way through the part. And I like to use that one quite often. Okay, especially because if this thickness changed or whatever, it'll still always extrude through all of it, no matter what the thickness is. So there we go, we got the three holes in there. Okay, what we're gonna do next is I wanna create this wall thickness. Now, it kinda looks sorta complicated. There's a lot of arcs and circles, etc. Well, we're gonna use a really cool command called shell. So I'm just gonna select this face, right mouse click, and again, it shows me the commands, and one of them is shell. I get this little blue arrow, I'm gonna to start to drag and you can visually see what's gonna happen here and also notice what happens when we start to get larger than that circle there, it kind of combines it all together, which is pretty cool. Okay, and you can see that we're gonna shell to the inside. And in this case, uh, five millimeter wall thickness. So I type in five, we can kind of see how that updated and notice how quickly we were able to create that particular shape using the shell command and not using a complex profile. Okay. The next thing is to create these little arms here. Let me kind of, you can kind of see what's going on right here. Again, this is a fairly complicated profile, but we're going to use a really neat command and that command is the web command. Now I don't know if you've played with this or not but I'll show you how this works. It's very very powerful. So what I'm going to do is I want to create a sketch on the top face, the top of my web basically and it's going to extrude down. So I'm going to click on this top face and say let's create a sketch. Okay. Then again, using the drawing, um, we can see here that they're at the angle of 45 degrees. So based off of the center marks of these circles. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna create a line at 45. So we'll come in here. All I have to do is get near my circle. You can see how it automatically catches to the center. And I'll start to draw my line. Now, I want to be very precise, so I'm going to tab over to my angle, and I'm going to type in 135, because that's the, you know, the opposite of the 45, right? Because this is 45 up here. I'm going to do 135, and you'll notice as soon as I um, type in 135, it's locked into place. And so no matter where I move my mouse, it's staying at that angle, which is really cool. And then all I need to do is get near this line. I'm just going to go ahead and get near that line and you'll see it snap right to it. I don't really care what the length is. All I care about is it starts here and it's the angle of 45 and it ends there. And I'll do the same thing. Let's just go this way. I'll tab over, type in 45 in this case and get near that line and you'll see how it snaps to that line. Okay, then finally I'm just gonna get near this point and go straight up. And believe it or not, I'm done. I do not need to offset any lines or anything like that. 
All the web command requires is a profile. So I'm going to say finish sketch. And we can see that those lines are sitting on top of our part right here. I'll come in and say web. So it's asking for a curve. Now I'm going to go ahead and click this line right here and we're going to see an issue happen. But notice what it does. It actually uses this line and it's going to create this web based off of that line. So I can come in here and tell it what thickness. I want it to be three millimeters thick. And this is what's really cool. I'm going to go ahead and select this other line and you'll see how it automatically selects it also. But here's the issue. You can kind of see it's going through our hole right here. And that's because of this option right here, Extend Curves. Now if I turn that off, you'll see it goes exactly the length of the line, but then it leaves these little notches. So I need to come back and maybe edit my sketch a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll come in here and edit my sketch. And maybe instead of the line going all the way to the center, we can come in and trim it. So I'm going to say Trim. And let's just trim it to right there. I just click on the area I want to trim away. And now I'm saying just go to that curve. OK. So now let's try the web command. I'll select that edge there. And sure enough, I can have extend curves turned on. So we, it goes all the way through to that part. But you'll notice it doesn't go through our hole right there. I tell it what size thickness I want, whether I want it to be five, whether I want it to be three or whatever. I can tell it to be symmetric, so it's going to add um, the web on both sides, or you can do it in just one direction. But typically, you'll do it symmetric. And I'm just going to go ahead and add in that second one there. Now here's the um, another issue. I'm going to go ahead and add in this third line, and you'll notice that it, it's extending to the next geometry, which is way down here. And I actually don't want this in here. Now I could come back and delete these faces, but what I'm actually going to do is do this almost in two um, areas here. So I'm going to do just the X, and I'll say OK. And we've just created those little webs. Let's go ahead and expand, open our sketch and turn it back on. And we'll use the web command again. So I'll say web, what's the curve? I'm going to click on this curve and now you'll notice that because this area was created, it didn't have to extend all the way down. So we're actually doing this in two steps. I'll go ahead and say OK. And there is the back of our part. And if we take a look at the actual model, you can kind of see, you know, the crisscross and that little vertical line. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something really cool. I think this is neat. I don't know how many people know about this. I want to put a small fillet on a whole bunch of edges. Okay. And that would take me a long time to select all of those edges. So I'm just going to come in here and say fillet. And instead of selecting edges, I'm actually going to select a feature. So I'm going to grab this web feature and check this out. I'm going to type in, let's just say 0.5 millimeters. And instantly, it selects all of the edges that had to do with that feature. Okay. So. Imagine how long that would have taken me to select all of those edges. Now you'll notice a little uh, thing going on here. It didn't blend like this edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this other rib. And you'll notice how it goes ahead and does that also. Okay. Now there's a couple in here I could, you know, might want to add in. So I could always come in and, and grab more edges to add those in if I want to. But the fact that it selected all of the ribs. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out. 
and do that one more time because I think it's so useful. I'm going to say uh, fill it. We'll select that feature and that feature and tell it that we want it to be 0.5. Okay. And it grabs all of the edges that have to do with those web features. Now I showed that it didn't do these edges right here. I'm like, well, I could select those individually or I could come in and select the shell feature and notice what it did. It grabbed all the edges that had to do with the shell. So we're actually grabbing multiple features and it's selecting all of those edges. I'll say OK. Now I hope you think that's as cool as I do. Um, imagine how long it would take for us to select those where now we can just grab a couple features in the timeline and it does it automatically. So thumbs up Fusion team for that. Love it. OK, let's move on here. We basically finished the back of the part here in just a couple moments. Now we want to start working on the, uh, the front of this. So uh, maybe on one of these tubes right here. So taking a look at the drawing, let's just kind of zoom out a little bit. We can see um, the diameter of the tube is 34 and a half with a wall thickness of 3.5. But how are we going to create this tube? And this is where it kind of gets, how would you do this, right? And that's kind of why we call this, how would you make this part? Well, what I've done here in this drawing is I, I have this center line and we can see that it's 40 millimeters up from the bottom and it's about 95 millimeters long. So we're going to actually create a plane in this particular direction that's 95 millimeters away from that point and we're just going to extrude to our part. So that's, I'm kind of giving you the the movie trailer part. What are we going to be doing here? So, okay. So let's go ahead and create another sketch. And because I created it at the zero, zero, we're, we're symmetric, right? So I'm going to grab this face of the origin and I'm just going to draw a line. I don't care what length, what size, what angle. I'm just going to draw a line like so. Now I can come back and dimension this. So I want to go from that edge there to this edge here and I want that to be 45 degrees and you can see how the line updated. I also want the length of the line to be 95 millimeters. Again according to the drawing so we can kind of see how that updated. And then we know that the point right there needs to be 40 millimeters from the bottom of the part. So I'm going to type in 40 and again we can see that that line is now fully constrained. It turned black. We know the angle, we know the length, and we know the location. Now once again I don't want this to be an actual object line so I'm going to select it and turn it to a construction line like so. And we're done. And if we kind of rotate around we can kind of see how that line is at 45 degrees to this face. It's right in the middle and it's at a particular height. So what I want to do now is be able to draw a circle at the end of this line. Okay. So to do that I need to have a sketch plane on that line and I've shown this command before but plane along a path is extremely useful. So I'm going to say plane along a path We'll click on that path and that's going to create a plane that I can put anywhere I want on this path. And I'm going to drag it all the way to the very end. And you can kind of see, um, in fact, if, if you don't know this, that the plane along a path is basically a ratio. So you can see there's 0.5. If I go all the way to the end, that's zero. If I go all the way to this end, that's one. So it's not really a distance as much as it is a percentage or a ratio, right? So if I typed in, you know, 0.75, it's going to be right at, you know, three quarters of the way up the line. Okay. So obviously I want it to be at the very end. I'll say OK. And I now have that plane at the end of that line, which I can create a sketch on. So I'm going to say create sketch. We'll use the circle command. 
And according to this, it's uh, 34.5. And that's all I need to do. Okay, I'm not going to draw the inner circle. You'll see why here in just a moment. But that's the overall diameter of that post. So we'll select it, right mouse click, and it shows me the commands that make sense. I'm going to say extrude. Now here's another neat little trick. How far do I need to extrude? Well, I could drag, but as soon as it intersects, it's going to cut through, right? So obviously we want it to, uh, well, we'll say join, but to get it to go all the way <laughs> along that face, it would stick out the back like so, which is kind of weird, right? So we're going to use a cool command. Instead of distance, we're going to say extrude to an object. What's the object? I'm just going to click on that face, and Fusion figures out automatically for me what does it need to do to extrude to that face? So that is the two object, and it's really useful. We're actually going to use this, I think, a couple times today. Okay. Now, here's something we're going to run into. I'm going to use the shell command to hollow out this tube. Okay. Now, why did I not just draw two circles? Well, I could have, very well could have. But I like to use the shell command because then I can come back and say, make it four millimeters, make it one millimeter. You know, instead of having to go back to a sketch or whatever, I can just look for the shell feature and change that in my timeline. However, I've already shelled out this part and I don't want it to be calculated in my shell. So what do we do here? Well. Instead of joining it, let's actually create this as a new body. In fact, I'll expand and open the bodies. You can see we only have one right now. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And now you'll notice that we actually have two separate bodies. In fact, I could turn this guy off. And we're left with this as a separate body. It's still extruded to the other part. OK but it's separate. Now I can come in and say, you know what, let's shell this out. How far? Uh, 3.5 according to the drawing. And if we look at it, it's kind of sh shelling it out only one way. But if I add this other face, it's going to turn it into a tube. We're shelling it out the top and the bottom. So kind of a cool, cool trick there. I'll say OK. Let's turn this other body back on now. And you can see that we were able to shell that out. Now, I do want this to be all one body. So let's go ahead and combine these together. So I'm going to say combine. I'll say that part there and that part there. We want to join them together. And when I say OK, we'll see that we're back to one body. Now we're going to see an issue here. <laughs> we hollowed this guy out, but because we joined it to a solid piece, there's no hole going all the way through. So how do we fix that? Well, we could have created a sketch and extrude through, but instead, let's just select that face and say delete and notice what it does. It actually deletes that face through our part and now that post is going all the way through. Very useful command there. Okay, hopefully this is all making sense. Um, I can see Aaron's pretty busy in the chat window there. If you have any questions or comments, definitely throw them out into the uh, chat window. So the next thing I want to do is to create this area right here. Okay, and if we look at the drawing, um, I kept it pretty simple. We can kind of see a, a section view of this area. So we can see it's about 10 and a half wide and five millimeters wide. 
Um, it's curved, etc. I don't have any dimensions like where it goes to on this post, and you'll see why here in just a moment. I, I left some of this up to your uh, discretion. So I'm going to go ahead and create these two curves right here. And we're going to learn another cool command. Okay, so I want to create those curves. So I'm going to say, let's create a sketch on this side profile here. And I'm going to use the arc command. So three-point arc. Let's just start at the top. Now you'll notice it captured that point right there. But as I hover over here, it's not capturing the edge of this cylinder. There's no edge that's projected that it can catch to because a cylinder really has no edges. And I want to be precise, okay? So how do we go about doing this? We're going to use a command. Hopefully you're familiar with the project command. Project allows you to project geometry. So for example, I can project this face and you can kind of see how it's highlighting it red right here. So it's going to project that face onto our, our sketch plane here. But you'll notice if I hover over this, it doesn't project an edge. It's only projecting the end right here. So that's really not helping me in this case. So you might say, well, what do we do? Well, there's another cool command under the project menu called intersect. And what this does is it allows you to pick geometry and it's going to project the intersection of this geometry. So our piece of paper is slicing through the middle of this tube. You can kind of see that here. So when I click on intersect and I just grab that guy, let's take a look at what it did. It basically projected what's intersecting with this plane. Okay. I'll turn the body back on. You can kind of see now we have an actual edge that we can catch to. So intersect is very, very useful, especially with like spherical, cylindrical, organic type shapes. Okay. Okay, so now I'll, I'll do the same thing just so you can kind of see what's going on here. Let's do uh, intersect. And I can grab, you know, like for example, this face right here or this face here. It really doesn't matter. I'll, I'll grab both of them. And it basically projected the intersection onto that work plane. Or the sketch plane, I should say. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do my arc command. So let's say arc, three points. I'm going to go from here. And then when I come over here, you'll see that it'll automatically snap to the center. And that's kind of what... I did in my example. That's why I didn't really dimension it. I'm just going to get what I think looks good. So let's just snap to the center there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and place my arc. Now if I zoom out a little bit, we can actually see a center point for that arc. And let's go ahead and dimension this. Because according to the drawing, and you, see, you can see the radius there, According to the drawing, the radius is 40. So I'm going to type in 40. We'll say OK. And there we are. Then um, I'm going to go ahead and just offset this curve. The 2.5 thickness. Again, from the drawing, I'm going to do 2.5. And believe it or not, we're actually done with our sketch. I just drew basically two curves. So here is a new command that I haven't shown. It's not new in Fusion, it's just new that I haven't shown it yet. <laughs> um, so it's the rib command. This is actually quite useful. So I'm gonna click on rib and it's asking for a curve. I'm gonna go ahead and select that curve and by default it's usually set to next. Let me go ahead and try that one more time. We do uh, rib Make sure, by default, it's usually set to next. So I'm going to click on this curve here, and you can see it instantly figures out how to fill in that area. Okay, so it's basically taking this profile and extending it to the nearest geometry. 
So we know that the width here is five. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in five. And you can even see that it's curving around because of this curved surface. I'll say okay. And there is our rib. Now think about how long that might take not using the rib command. I would have had to have intersected it with this because of the curvature of the face. I mean, it might have taken a little bit of time. I could do it, but the rib command is so useful. In fact, let's go ahead and use it again for the top T part. I'm gonna come in here and say rib. Now, if I were to select this guy, it's going to basically just add on to it. And if I were to change the thickness, it's gonna add to the thickness there. So I don't want it to go all the way down. So instead of saying to the next shape, I wanna go a very specific depth. And in this case, I wanna go uh, 2.5. So it's taking this edge right here and creating a rib that's two and a half millimeters thick. And now I can specify the overall thickness of it, which according to the drawing is uh, 10 and a half, 10.5. And I'll say, okay. Let's go ahead and turn off our, our sketch here. So you can kind of see what this looks like. Now I see a little bit of an issue, which we'll get to here in just a second. But notice we've created a somewhat complicated geometry using two simple lines, an arc, and another arc, okay? Now what I see here is I see a line that kind of goes across. Um, you can see that it did wrap around. Now I don't like this line right here, so I'm gonna just grab those two faces and say delete, and Fusion will have to heal that geometry. So what it looked like is, you know, it came to a point and then went straight to the part. Well, I want it to continue this nice curvature to go all the way to the part. So I just deleted those faces out of there. Okay. Now, just like I showed before, check this out. I can come in and say fill it and grab features. So let's grab these two rib features and type in 0.5 and notice what it's gonna do. It's gonna fill it all of those edges that have to do with that rib feature, okay? So I'm not gonna do it right now, but I just wanted to show you that that actually works and it does it on both sides. So again, saving a huge amount of time on trying to um, you know, create, you know, select all those edges, for example. Okay, now let's say we want to create this curved fillet here. So you can kind of, I'll highlight it in this one here. So it starts out small, gets fairly large, and then ends small again. And this is just to add some strength to this tube being attached to this base. So how would we go about doing this? Well, we're gonna use the fillet command. So I'll say fillet. But instead of a constant radius, we're gonna do a variable radius, okay? It's asking for the edges. I'll go ahead and select this edge here. And you'll notice that it starts with a start point and an end point. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, we start at one, and you can actually kind of see the preview already. It's going from one to zero around, which is kind of cool. But we wanna start at one and we wanna end at one. Okay, now as I move my cursor kind of near this edge, let me zoom up. I don't know if you can see that little red ball very easily, but you can kind of see this red ball. And this is actually gonna allow us to add in extra points. And I'm just gonna kind of move along and what's kind of cool is if I get near the bottom here, you'll see it turn green. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click right there. And hopefully this makes sense now. We can see, again, kind of a, a percentage or a ratio from zero to one. So halfway along this edge, we clicked a position. And I want it, instead of being one millimeter, I want that to be 15 millimeters. And now we can see what's going on here. It's starting at one, 
as it goes around, it's going to go to 15. And then as it gets to the end, it's going to go back to 1 again. Okay. Now, I don't really like how this looks. It kind of tapers off way too fast. So I'm going to add in some more points. I'm just going to move my cursor until we see this red dot again. I'm just going to go ahead and click. And notice right here, a new point has been created at position 0 0.205. Well, I want it to be a quarter of the way. So I'm going to say 0.25. And I want that to be a radius of 3. And notice what happened. It's keeping it smaller. Then it's getting to a radius of 3 to right here. Then it's going from 3 to 15 right here. Pretty cool, right? I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to move until I can see that red dot. And let's just go ahead and click somewhere like there. And I want that to be 3 quarters of the way, so I'm going to type in 0.75. And again, I want that to be 3, and watch what happens, okay? We can kind of see how it keeps it nice and tight, and then it opens up to the 15. So we can create some pretty cool fillets using this variable radius. Now you're probably asking, okay, where'd you get all these numbers? Let me show you on the drawing. Um, over on the side over here, I basically described it. It's a variable blend, one millimeter at the ends, three millimeters at a quarter and three quarters, and then 15 millimeters at a half, okay? So that's what that note means when you go to create that variable blend. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is now we've pretty much created a majority of this. We need to create this horizontal um, flagpole holder because this allows you to hang it at like a 45 or to do it horizontal. Um, again, just using the dimensions off of the drawing, we can see it's 34.5, our thickness, but we notice that it's kind of at an angle and there's a notch cut out of it. So we're going to work on that. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, I need to be very specific where I want to start creating this part from. So I'm going to create an offset plane from this face. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that face, start to drag, and according to the drawing, it's 80 millimeters away. So I type in 80, and we can kind of see what that looks like. I'll say OK. And we just created a construction plane that's 80 millimeters from that face. Now I can sketch on this. So let's go ahead and create a sketch. Um, and I'll draw my profile. So I usually draw kind of off to the side and then I bring it into location. So I, can, I know that this needs to be 34.5. Okay. I'm going to throw a dimension on here. I know it needs to be, um, let's just go here. And that needs to be, I think it says 46. And again, I want it to be in line with the center. So I might come in here and throw a line from the center. So I can go something like this straight up don't doesn't matter what size and I'm going to convert that to a construction line okay so you can kind of see what this looks like then all I have to do is say I want um, I could say coincident let's just say that guy there and that guy there and you can see how it moved it over in fact let's look at it from the front and there's our shape now um, to save time, because I'm running out of time here, I'm going to go ahead and create the other circle. Uh, I was going to show that um, I would use the shell command, but unfortunately in this case we can't. And I'll show you why here in just a moment. So I could come in here and say um, this is going to be 34.5 minus 3.5, right? I could do that. So I could say 34.5 minus 3.5. And that'll create the circle for me. 
Or I could come in here and say offset. And I can come in and just drag this down a little bit. And we want to go minus uh, 3.5 in this case. Okay. So there is our shape. There's our profile. Now, let's go ahead and extrude this guy. We'll say extrude. Start to drag, and again, we're going to run into that weird issue and all that kind of stuff. So let's use, instead of distance, let's just say to object and click on that other pipe. And you're going to see that it's going to figure out what it needs to do to actually extrude to that shape. Okay. I'll go ahead and say OK. Now again, we see this issue here, so let's just select it and hit the delete key. And now we're looking through the part. So we were able to make that go all the way through. Now, unfortunately, there's an issue here. And if I expand open this guy, you can see that there's actually a vertical wall. So it's not a tube. It's basically a tube with vertical walls. So, how am I going to do that? Well, let's go back to our sketch. And I'm going to just create a basic shape. So I'm just going to get near this uh, circle here and just kind of extend up a little bit. I don't care how far. And I'm just going to kind of get the basic shape like so. <laughs> now, obviously, I want to be more precise. So I'm going to say I want this line to be tangent to that circle. I want that line to be tangent to that circle. And I want those lines to be vertical. So I'm going to say that line to be vertical and that line to be vertical. So I'm basically just adding a bigger profile section right there. OK. Now I need to edit my extrude. And instead of just saying this little region, I need to expand it to that region there. You can kind of see what that looks like. So it's going to extrude the cylinder and this region here to look something like this. Kind of weird, OK? Well, the next thing we need to do is to add in this 45 degree angle. Now, how do we do that? <laughs> Again, there's many different ways you could do this. I could maybe draw it from the side and machine it away or whatever. But instead, let's use the draft command, where this actually allows you to add draft. Now, you'll notice it's asking for a draft plane. And I basically want to hinge it right down here at the very bottom. But my origin plane is way up here. I really don't see a draft plane that I could use. So we need to create one. And we're going to use the construction menu. Tangent plane. I want to be tangent to a curve. So I'm going to say tangent plane. What's the face? I just get near this face and check it out. It actually puts a plane right on that face. And I can specify what angle I want that to be. Right now it's at zero or minus 360. But I could say I want that plane to be at you know, 45 degrees or whatever, right? Well, we obviously want it to be at zero. I'll say OK. Now I have a plane where if I came in and said draft, what's my plane? It's basically going to hinge right here. So I'm going to click on that plane. What's the face? I'll grab that face there. And we'll start to rotate. And let's just go minus 45 degrees. Now, unfortunately, it looks like it's cutting. Let me. Uh, I might have to do this before I do the cut. So this is interesting that this happened this way. So let's go ahead and cancel that out. And um, I want to, let me see, what do I want to do here? Let me go ahead and I'm going to suppress that feature for the deleting of the face. Let's try that first. I want to. Try this. Let's go draft that. What's my face? That guy. Okay. 
So that wasn't the issue, unfortunately. Um, so let's do before this extrude right here. So I'm gonna come back and unselect that guy and say, okay. And let's do, let's just taper this feature right now. So I'll come in and say draft. Here's my plane. There's the face and we'll rotate minus 45. And I think I see what's going on here. It's because of that little notch right there, but we'll say, okay. Then let's come back and edit the um, extrude here. So let's, how, how do I do this? <laughs> I'll come in, let's add this guy. Maybe, oh, I, let's try this. Maybe this um, profile is too high. So let's just bring that down a little bit lower. Let's just see if that helps with it. And when I do my extrude, I'll add that guy back in. Say, okay, okay. I've said this multiple times. I also make mistakes. Now, you'll notice I went through and said, okay, why is this happening? So I think what was going on was my profile was too high and as it was rotating through, it was starting to cut way more material. So I said, maybe I need to lower that down a little bit. So that's what we did. I'll go ahead and unsuppress this delete. That should be okay. Um, maybe I need to do that. Oops, yeah, I'll just do it again. I'll say delete. Looks like it's saving it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my construction plane really quick. And now you can see we have this basic shape. Now I'm gonna kind of cruise through here because we're getting toward the top of the hour and I like to keep these um, less than an hour if possible. Uh, the next thing we want to do is to cut out this little notch. And again, not a lot of dimensions here. I basically gave you one dimension. Um, and we're gonna use some geometry to help us out. So let's come back here, click on this face, and I'm gonna just create a quick sketch here. Now, according to the drawing, we're basically referencing some existing lines. And again, I wanna to catch to the edge of the cylinder, so I'm going to project intersect. So I'm gonna grab that guy there, say okay, and it projected the intersection of that body, okay. Um, oh, actually I'm on the wrong face there, that's okay. Let's go ahead and do that again, I apologize. I'm going to put my sketch on my middle plane there. That's what I meant to do. Okay, then we can do our intersect because I really like to show that intersect command. So I'll grab this guy and we can see that sure enough, it projected those lines for us. What this is gonna allow me to do is I can come in and just go from point to point. I get that guy there. I can project this um, line here and let's offset that line, the correct distance. So in this case, um, 21.5. So it's kind of hard to see what's going on here, but I basically projected the edge and then I offset this line to get this corner right here. And we got the right distance. Now I can use a three point rectangle. So I can, for example, grab that point there, grab this point here, and I'm just gonna come out here and space a little bit. So we used that geometry to help us create that shape. Now we can extrude how far. I'm gonna just say all. Now I want it to go in both directions. So I'm gonna say symmetric. And we can see that it's gonna cut that notch out of there. I'll say okay. And we've now cut that notch. It's perfectly lined up with that tube. And there you can kind of see what that looks like. Okay. Um, this next section I think a lot of people are going to be excited about. Um, I posted a picture on Facebook uh, with some, some text on this curve and people are like, 
okay, how are you doing that? Are you using that sheet metal trick or whatever? No, I'm gonna show you kind of a neat, another new neat trick here that I use quite a bit to make the text actually match the curve of the pipe. So that's what we're gonna do next. So to create text, I need to have a construction plane. So I'm gonna do a tangent plane. I'm gonna click on this curved surface here and I wanna put it at a particular angle. So let's just go uh, maybe like minus 35 degrees. Now you'll notice I'm getting a warning message down in the bottom corner that says um, the object you're creating is not visible. Well, that's because I've turned off my construction. As soon as I turn it back on again, we can now see where that plane is. I can see that I'm at an angle of 35. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and sketch on this uh, plane. I'll quickly create my text here. So let's just say text and type in what I want. So on this it says made in USA. Let's go ahead and rotate that. So we're at 90 degrees. Let's make it bold. and I can now position this kind of where I want it on there and I'll say OK. So that text is now sitting on a flat piece of paper right on that face. Okay, now I learned this from you guys. <laughs> I used to convert or explode the text, but if you come in here and say press pull, I didn't know this. <laughs> you can actually, you don't have to convert your text. So thank you all for that. So we're gonna extrude this text, but you'll notice it's gonna be flat. Okay, and that's not what we want. So check this out. Before I extrude, I'm actually going to grab this face using my surface commands. I'm going to create an offset. And this actually allows you to offset individual faces. So we can see here we've got chain selection on or off. So I'm gonna just go ahead and click on this face and I want to offset that one millimeter. And you can kind of see the preview there. It's, it's taking this blue face and offsetting it one millimeter. And watch what happens when I say OK. It actually captured that face. And it's a, it's a surface right now. OK. So I'm going to turn that off for now. We'll come back to that. Now I'll do my extrude or my press pull, I should say. So let's just press pull out a little bit. Um, how far? Let's just go uh, two millimeters. I also want to go the other direction because I want to make sure it's intersecting that curved surface. And let's just go ahead and um, join these together. So here we are. We've extruded our text. It's totally flat. Now I'm going to turn on this other surface and we're going to use a cool command called replace face. What this allows you to do is to replace one face using the another face. Okay, so I'm going to say replace face. What's the source face? Let's click on this guy. And what's the target face? It's going to be this surface here. And you can kind of see the preview. I'll go ahead and say OK what it did it replaced that flat face with the curved face and now you can see how that m is actually matching the curve of this tube now i could do all the text but you get the idea it's the exact same thing i would just select all of these guys and and match them but what i love about this check this out i can come back and change my offset so instead of one millimeter, let's just say 0.2 millimeters, I'll say OK, and you'll see how it actually updates that thickness there. So that's how I went about making this curved text on this part. And you can kind of see how it follows that shape. So that is using the replace face command. OK. So that's pretty much it. Now all I would have left to do is to come in and fill it, um, you know, the edges that I want, for example. Uh, so we want those to be, you know, one, one millimeter. 
et cetera, et cetera. But that is the basis of designing this part. So we actually did quite a bit in just under an hour. Okay, um, I mentioned that I had a cool announcement. Um, I want to, we were hopefully gonna have a video, um, like a, another camera, um, but we're gonna have some more live streams from one of our cam specialists named Angelo. He's recently joined my team, awesome guy, very, very knowledgeable on cam. Um, he actually comes from Tesla and has done quite a few parts for that. In fact, I'm gonna just bring up his uh, Instagram page really quick. Um, he's gonna start doing some live streams that are really focused on the cam side of things. And let me make sure I'm sharing my screen here. There we go. Um, let me back up a little bit. So um, basically a very, very strong um, machinist. Um, so you can see like, for example, here's something he's creating in Fusion. Here's another part, etc. cetera. Um, I'm not gonna say much more than this. I want him to introduce himself. So keep an eye out for him. You're gonna see him on some upcoming live streams focused a lot mainly on cam. Uh, everything from basics to more advanced type stuff. I am, you, hopefully you can see my face, uber excited that he's part of our team. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Make sure you subscribe. Um, make sure you give a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever, if you like this video. Other topics uh, you'd like to see. Uh, we are looking through all of the uh, ideas that you come up with and adding those to our list. And we hope to see you on a future live stream. So thank you.